Do you know what was mad, right? I wanted to sign a new contract at Leeds, but there was no contract on the table. Like, oh, wow. not even a not even a, a reduced terms, just no contract at all. Um, and I'd just come off the back of three seasons, three firing seasons as well. I think I, I managed to get something like 85 goals over three seasons. Mm. So I'm looking at it from a perspective of, right, well, I've managed to score X amount of goals and do this, that, and the other. We finally got promoted. It's taken a little while to get promoted, but finally managed to get there. Contract. Where's the contract? I, I just want a contract because I'm I'm comfortable here. I'm I'm happy. I'm at home. This is this is my new surroundings. I, I'm familiar with literally every single part of Leeds. You know, not just the football club, the city, mm-hmm. Yorkshire now as well. Um, you're banging goals in, aren't you? And you want to carry banging mate, goals in. Do you know what the thing is, right? If I had had another contract with Leeds for the following season, I think we would have been promoted back to back because yeah. we had we had everything set and ready to go. We had the the confident players. We had. Um, the the tough defenders, the creative midfield players, the forwards, the the really tricky wide players, great goalkeepers, fantastic manager. We had everything set and ready. Yeah. So I I've gone from that not having a a, a contract offer to uh, at Leeds to having to figure out right shit. I've I've got to do something here. And I know Everton was sniffing around. I know West Ham was sniffing about. There were one or two other. Um, Premier League clubs and and a few from overseas as well, Benfica, Braga, um, nice. which would have been great experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, at the time, I just don't think I was mentally ready for the overseas move. Having had a chat with David Moyes and Steve Round is number two, and I had a phone call from Phil Neville. I bumped into Victor Anachebi a few times. Um, just listening to to those guys speak about this football club, speak about the fan base speak about what it means to the to the city it, it was so close to what Leeds United was mm. the similarities were were uncanny there's so there's so many parallels so i just said you know what that is an incredible football club and one i'd i'd, I'd be honored to represent if i get the opportunity to so mm. um final game of the season came when uh, managed just to captain the side out, went a man down, one nil down. I'm the captain. This is my. This is supposed to be my my swan song, so mm-hmm. to speak. And uh, you know everything's going against us. Pulled one back. Johnny House and scored a great goal. And then the ball fell to me <coughs> with about excuse me about 20 30 minutes to go. Buried it. Two one up at Ellen Road. Won the game. I'm buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. Fans are all on the pitch going nuts. And I'm in the moment. I'm enjoying the moment. But I'm, I'm also thinking to myself, this is my last moment as a Leeds player. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to I wanna try and savour it as much as possible. But I also don't want to, I don't want to forget any elements, any aspects of this. I love this, man. I wonder what's going to happen next. And then I got a phone call about half an hour later after the, the carnage had died down a little bit in the mm-hmm. changing rooms. Um... And it was my agent and he said to me, right, we've agreed everything with, with Everton. Is it yes or is it no? Oh. <laughs> That's literally, I'm in the change rooms as well. Yeah. You know, with everybody celebrating around me, the music's blaring, it's, it's, yeah. it's madness. Yes or no? So I'm thinking, if I say yes and then the chairman walks in and he's like, I've changed my mind. <laughs> yeah. Here's a contract. You know, I, I'm a man that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. My word is my bond, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I'm not going to go back on that. I'm speaking to the, I spoke to the gaffer briefly. I said, look, what are the, what's the possibilities? What are the chances of me getting a contract from the, from the chairman? And he's like, slim to none. I don't know why. Strange. Hmm. So I was like, it's a yes from me. <laughs> but again, look, it, it makes it sound like it's one of those situations that was forced upon me. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. But when you've been at a club for four and a half years and you know everybody by first name, you know families, like, and I don't mean the players or the playing staff or the coaches. I mean like dinner ladies and security guards and um, all the guys and girls in the offices and accounts. Like I know them all. They're all extended family. You know, yeah. so when you're going from a situation like that where 
it's so close knit. You don't want to leave that. But something similar happened when I came here. It was everybody from behind the scenes became family, an extended family all over again. So the situations, everything that I learned while I was at Leeds, I managed to bring here. But I also took a lot of information from here and situations and take them elsewhere. So it was a, an amazing place, an amazing football club for me. Um, and it gave me my dream as well of being able to, to call myself a Premier League football player, you yeah. know, playing in the best league in the world with and against some of the best players and managers yeah. that, that the game yeah. has ever encountered. 